Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're at the mill area, but today's video's on the old Copperton Mill. So, stay tuned! Today we're going to talk about the Copperton Mill. We have some great pictures of this old mill. Now, ore was discovered at Bingham Canyon in 1863. There was gold, silver, lead, but the whole mountain was full of these copper particles spread throughout the whole area. The miners just considered this as a nuisance. With the coming of the railroad in 1873, this is what made the mines of Bingham flourish. By the turn of the century, the demand of copper grew with electricity, the lights, motors, phones, and the automobile all needed copper. Bingham Canyon had a mountain of this low-grade ore. So here's that mountain to the right. This was taken in 1904 before open-cut mining started. This is picture is one of the early trains that came into the mine that really helped the mines take off. Two young mining engineers, Daniel Jackling and Robert Gimmel, had the idea to use steam shovels and steam trains to mass-produce this low-grade ore. So they built this experimental mill in Copperton to see if that would work. The purpose of the mill was threefold. First, to verify the accuracy of the sampling of the ore coming out of the mine. Two, to demonstrate the feasibility of large-scale milling to recover copper from that low-grade ore. The percentages was just over 1% found throughout that mine and three, to test the various kinds of crushing and concentrating machines to help engineers design a large 6,000 ton a day plant of magna. The Copperton Mill will also serve as a training school for those who will later operate the large mills at magna. Construction started in August 1903, and it was placed in operation April 1904. But that first concentrator processed 300 tons or daily. It's just interesting to see all these neat pictures of this old Copperton mill. Now this right here is also a Stanboard Farm Insurance map, 1907 of the mill compound. And these are just more pictures of that mill. Most of the equipment was second hand from the Sunnyside Mine and Mill, and that was in Colorado. Now here's a later picture of that Sunnyside Mill. I think it was around 1940. And then another picture of the mine area of that Sunnyside Mine. The equipment was skillfully installed by George O. Bailey and Frank Janling. They were former employees of the Merker Mine that was in Utah. Here's some pictures of Frank Janling, and he's driving this car. You can see they're out visiting the big mills that was coming out to Magna. Now we have some great inside pictures of this mill. I'm glad we have these. I see all the belts and stuff to run all the mill workings in here. Some of these pictures was taken in 1904, so I guess it was just brand new when it was taken. These pictures were taken. Now here's a map of where it was in the canyon. It was at the beginning of the canyon by Dry Fork Canyon. So here's a dot by it. Then here's a picture of Dry Fork Canyon. Dry Fork Canyon had this great big large uh, viaduct, this bridge on the for the BNG Railroad we went through there. And here's a picture of looking down on that mill. So years later, when they was building the Dry Fork shop, and that was on the same side, you can see the remains of some remains of that old Copperton mill. I think that was really neat. Water for the milling operation was supplied from a shaft 150 feet deep. This was dug by the West Mountain Pacer Mining Company. They dug it to develop water supply for hydraulic mining. In 1905, this supply proved inadequate for the mill, so a settling reservoir was built to impound the water from Bingham Creek, where it was then pumped up into the mill. This is a picture of them 
building this settling pond right here, this uh, little reservoir, and then the pictures of it later. The water problem was one of the reasons they built the large mills out, out to Magna. It was called Pleasant Green at one time. Anyway, the other reason was that they needed more room for the tailings. And so they found that at the north end of the Ochre Mountain Range. They found a well, had a lot of water, and then had a lot of room for the tailings out there. The equipment was powered by steam until 1906, when the company finally built their own electric plant out in Magna. So here's a picture of that first power plant out there. And here's some pictures of the mill they was building out to the Magna area. These are pictures were taken in 1907 and then later. So they build them out here for more room and for more water. So the first ores were delivered to the Copperton Mill by the way of the Copper Belt Railroad. We had a video on that Copper Belt Railroad and they had a bunch of shades that actually worked on that line. It was a nine mile route down to that mill from the mine. The railroad entered the mill over a trussel and the ore was dumped into a thousand ton ore bin beneath the track. And here's a picture of that ore bin right here. You can see then later on they they covered it. You can see here some map pictures of that area where the ore bin was and then they covered it with this uh, building right here. Now the first concentrates from the Copperton Mill were first smeltered by the Bingham Consolidated Plant and that was in Midvale. Here's a picture of the Midvale smelter. And then uh, by 1906 the big uh, smelter they built out in Garfield for Utah Copper and all the concentrates went were shipped to Garfield. Improvements were made in the years following. They used every known type of concentrating apparatus they could get their hands on. So by August 1st, 1910, when the mill was finally closed, the capacity had been increased to 1,000 tons per day. So that's a big improvement from the 300 tons that they started with. So that's the Copperton Mill at Bingham Canyon.